What's going on, guys? Cruising Podcast, welcome. We are live on TikTok right now, seeing you know all our followers on TikTok, getting them in on the podcast, teaching them about what's going on, and we also recording the episode. So welcome, welcome. Uh, what's going on, guys? So Josh is not with me today. Josh is currently playing Ghost of Tsushima, and I gotta say, man, we've been playing it for the past couple days, and it's uh so far. I'm not gonna give a we are going to do a formal review once it's out and going, but man, so far it is impressive. It is amazing. Uh, I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I mean, I I believe last night I played from like nine, ten o'clock at night to like six in the morning. We've been really just putting in all the time in on it, really enjoying it, and we really want to take our time on it, play it, really fully play it, and flesh it out. Uh, to give you guys our thoughts on it because it's 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 so far it's been great it's been great and today on the podcast just wanted to talk uh, what i s- noticed was trending the other day now that i remembered was the uh, release the air cut has been trending everywhere and this thing it's i mean people are really trying to push this they're really pushing to make this happen to to get this air cut out there and you know i'm not against it i i did not like suicide squad um i wasn't a fan i know there's some fans out there but uh i just i wasn't a fan that being said i am in full support of a director like a Zack snyder like a david ayer who had their own original vision for their own for their project and that vision was changed and manipulated by the studio uh in order to try to just get a different response you know lack of confidence i think it was uh i think suicide squad would be a a great example of that and also justice league look what happened with justice league right justice league wasn't wasn't a good movie and that movie was reshot and changed completely and we have a someone joining us welcome welcome to our live podcast welcome hope you enjoy this and um look you know Zack snyder i'm really happy for him that he's getting his justice league right and that movie was completely altered by the studio they had a new director come in it was a huge deal and that's coming out on hbo max which i think was a great move uh from the studio's part i mean but these fans man really pushed for it and now we're seeing david ayer fans coming out David Ayer himself coming out, talking about this, really pushing to get this out there in a streaming service, right? Streaming services have made things so much more possible for all directors, all creatives in the sense of now you can look at Justice League. You know, you can have a movie, you can take a risk and put it on your streaming service. It doesn't have to come out in theaters. It doesn't have to do anything like that so i think that's a great move with Zack snyder and all that but with david ayer in the suicide squad i don't know how i feel about that um the movie itself there was a script leak that just came out i have it here there was a script leak that came out not too long ago and it was basically talking the joker was gonna have a bigger role in it david ayer confirms it you know he He's been very vocal about his uh, air cut, you know. That's the trend that re- hashtag released the air cut. And there's, uh, I'm gonna put the 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 scene, the the script here on our on our YouTube video. But Joker was gonna have a big, a sh- way bigger part in this movie. He was going to be, uh, there was gonna be a scene with him and Enchantress, 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 and. There's a whole back and forth between him and uh, her and Joker, and I guess so. I'm I'm assuming the third act of this movie was right here. I'm seeing page. This looks like page 118, 156. So th- yeah, this is this is deep in the movie, and you know we got Harley Quinn in here, Flag, Joker's in it as well, Deadshot. Uh, Enchantress telling Joker to bring her, bring her the sword. I want the sword. Dialogue looks, you know, dialogue still looks rough, you know. But again, it's it's not what we see in the final movie, you know. And and you always want to try to support 
a filmmaker's original vision for something. Because, you know, at the end of the day, David Ayer did get a lot of criticism. And at the end of the day, that wasn't his true vision of what he wanted. And that's what I feel, that's what I'm really against. It's just, you shouldn't get criticized for what's supposed to be your movie but the studio backed out and didn't support your original vision and they re redid the whole movie and then what and then you're stuck with all the criticism at, at the end of the day those weren't your creative decisions i'm sure the script was his right there was reshoots and stuff like that but you gotta also take into consideration with suicide squad this movie was supposed to be rated R. Uh, George, welcome. Thank you for watching, man. I appreciate it. Uh, if you look at Suicide Squad, David Ayer, yes, the script is there. There was a lot of reshoots, but what it's amazing what editing can do, right? What happened was when this movie was shot and done, they shot, they took out a huge chunk, a huge chunk of. Uh, all the Joker scenes, right? All the Joker scenes were cut. Joker's maybe, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, 10, 15 minutes uh, in Suicide Squad. That to me was just, I it was unacceptable in the sense of, it's a Joker. You And I, I'm not a fan of Jared Leto's Joker. I'm really not. But I would have liked for Jared Leto to have a full portrayal of his version of the character and see maybe we would have ended up liking him a little bit more maybe he would have had better scenes and stuff like that david ayer shot this movie it was supposed to be rated r that's what they all agreed on then they changed it last second and the studio decided to hire these people from a company that are they specialize in uh music videos to edit the movie now i don't know about i don't know about you guys watching or listening but if you are, if you seen the Suicide Squad, that movie is like one long music video. It's very, and I understand the style that they were trying to go for. Like they, you know, at that time, Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Deadpool. There was a lot of different things that maybe they had inspiration from that they thought maybe could work for this movie. But it it harmed them. It, it really damaged the movie. I've, to, in my opinion, Suicide Squad was just not not a good movie it's, it's it's a shame you know i wanted to like it i really did you look at that that movie got a lot of criticism it got a lot of hate and david ayer gets a lot of that blame you know and then suicide squad comes around it actually happens Zack snyder's gonna complete his original version for justice league and now we are getting the same thing and it's possible it's possible if hbo max if you look at warner brothers they can easily try to re-edit this movie and push it out if there's enough people if enough people are vocal and in support for david ayer's suicide squad and you know he's he's come out talking about it he says guys no this is real there's a cut there it's done it, it was edited out, you know, it was not what I had, what, what I wanted, uh, the studio interference and all that, you know, and there was a huge trend. Now there's script leaks coming out, confirming this with Joker in a pivotal scene in the third act. And that's a big deal. You know, that's a big deal because what's the original version that we were supposed to get of this movie that maybe we didn't see that we didn't see it's a fact at this point there's confirmed scripts out you know hey Catherine, welcome to the live chat appreciate it uh and you know that's it's just one thing you know with this podcast i always want to try to be honest and and you know i'm in full support for supporting a director's original vision you know because it's 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 hard man and i would i i would like to see david ayer david ayer's version of suicide squad out there I really would, and I know he's he's been really vocal about it. I didn't agree with the fact that he was being really vocal about it right after, right after uh, Justice League was announced. I thought he should have waited, but I guess he was just using that traction to maybe get Suicide Squad out there. I I hope it happens. I I don't see the harm in, especially right now where movies are. Movie, they're all delayed, right? There's not a lot. There's no movie theaters. There's nothing right now. Uh, the movie business is a little slow. But I think it would be great to see, um, just re-edit the movie, 
let David Ayer do his thing and and release it on HBO Max. You know, HBO Max is a great streaming service. They're doing it with with uh, Justice League, right? And we're getting the Snyder Cut of Justice League. It would be interesting. I I don't know if it would make the movie better, but I think it deserves a chance to let us see that for ourselves. You know, let us be the judges of that and not just assume. And you know. The only thing I see that would be confusing is there is already a sequel slash soft reboot of Suicide Squad. And what's interesting enough is they're getting James Gunn, the director of Guardians of the Galaxy, to direct this movie. And uh, But, you know, it's a soft reboot, but there's certain characters coming back, then other characters being recasted. So there's a lot of back and forth here uh it's very it's a very weird situation so that i think that's what's gonna be an issue for this air cut to come out because how are you going to release your cut of suicide squad but then there's a there's a soft reboot of suicide squad coming out within the next year or two and with some of the same characters some are not some are uh recasted Essentially, it's a reboot, you know. Do you, you know, I'm all for it. I'm all for the idea of supporting and releasing David Ayer's original version of this movie, you know. Um, just as a way to... Because he did. He did get a lot of criticism um, from me, from us on the podcast, from from a lot of people. Because we thought that was the original version of the movie, you know. And that sucks. That That sucks that you have to get that criticism from people... But it was that's not the the version that you intended. You know, at the end of the day, they did the dialogue, the scenes that are shot are his. But the way the movie was edited, there was a a lot of cuts from the movie. Joker, and I think Joker is a pivotal part of that. I think Joker was cut out. Almost all his scenes were cut out of the movie, and that's a shame because. Although I have my feelings about Jared Leto's Joker, I do think he needed a he deserved a fair he needed a fair chance to portray that character, and I don't think he was able to do that in ten to fifteen minutes. Although those ten to fifteen minutes, in my opinion, were rough, I wasn't a fan. But you know what? If I want to determine that based off a whole portrayal of that character, I want give me an, a full Joker in that movie in the whole movie the original way that they wanted it you know not just 10 minutes and everything else was cut out this movie was supposed to be rated r it was supposed to be a lot it was supposed to be a lot of different things and you know now with the script coming out there's script leaks so you know people are really trying to make this happen i hope it happens what's the what's the worst that can happen you know what's the worst that can happen in that situation i hope i hope he gets that vision out you know, if Zack, Zack Snyder got it out, that was a huge deal, right, with Zack Snyder's uh, cut. You know, that was a huge thing. I mean, that movie was completely different. It was reshot in so many ways. The tone was different. Um, it's amazing the power of editing in a movie, right? You can have a movie. Well, you can have one type of movie, and you can just re – you can cut it and edit it into anything that you want. Anything that you want. A perfect example, Suicide Squad. You look at the uh, live-action Scooby-Doo movie, right? Um, for any fans out there of those 2000, 2000s uh, Scooby-Doo movies, uh, 1 and 2, that movie was actually written by James Gunn, right, who's doing the reboot of Suicide Squad and who is doing, uh, who did the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, and he's doing part 3. He wrote this movie, and it was supposed to originally be a rated R Scooby-Doo comedy, like a raunchy comedy right and they shot the movie right and i don't know if you guys remember seeing that movie when you were a kid and watching it now there's a lot of sexual tension in that movie right a lot of uh adult jokes in that movie that you wouldn't expect from a scooby-doo ip you know and i found that really interesting and little now that was actually starting to come out right i mean he and there was supposed to be uh, like very sexual rated R jokes. Shaggy was going to be like a pothead. 
and Scooby, and it was like all this like rated. It was like this whole rated R movie, and what happened with the studio was last minute, the movie was shot. They re-edited the whole movie and made it into a PG-13 kids comedy, and it worked. I mean, the first movie made money, and they made a sequel. Right after the sequel, they stopped. But what does that tell you? It's crazy the power that what editing can do in a movie. It's it's incredible because if you can change, you can get an R-rated comedy with you know sex, drugs, and all this. They couldn't you know they couldn't hide all of it, right? Because you know rewatching that movie now, older, you you look at it and you're like, wait a second, yeah, I knew that was weird. Why is all this like sexual tension with characters? Uh, characters ses- uh, dressed very sexually, right? It was very weird, and. It's interesting to see how editing can just really change a whole movie. So imagine for David Ayer, he shot he shot his movie and all that, and the studio's kind of like, "Look, man, we want to change this. We we, we want to do it like this. Let's you know, let's try, make it PG thirteen. Let's do this. Let's make it more like a music video, right? We got these guys coming in, and David Ayer has no say at the end of the day. And at that point, that's the exact the the execs and the studio." You got to go along with it, right? And he he does seem very upset about it. I would be upset too. That's you know you had an original vision that you agreed on and had to be changed. And you know I hope it happens, man. HBO Max, you put it on HBO Max, people get to watch it. More traction for you know for your streaming service, and everybody's happy. You know now I do I'm. Should this be a repeated pattern? I don't know. I because I do know. You know, is everyone gonna want their own cut now for their movies? You know, uh, are all directors gonna come out saying I wanted this cut of this movie? I want. I don't know. Does this happen as often? I don't know that either. I think that's just a Warner Brothers not knowing what they're doing with the DCEU, and it's happened twice so far, right? With uh, Justice League and Suicide Squad. You know, it just goes to show how. They've been so back and forth on what they really want in these movies. And I think now they're starting to find their footing and they're really figuring things out, you know. And let's see, you know, let's see. I, I'm, I'm all for it, though. You know, the air cut. Are you guys for the air cut? I, I am, man. You know, it doesn't hurt to see a creator's original vision, you know, that was changed and manipulated by the studio execs. Uh because they thought they, you know, they're trying to find a way to see how it makes the most money, and it most of the time it usually just ends up it ends up hurting the film, you know. Seen and the uh, leaked uh, King Kong versus Godzilla uh, images came out. I have them over here, and I gotta say, this movie looks very expensive. I mean, you got King Kong, Godzilla. They're around the same height. Uh, because I uh, King Kong grows older since the last movie, since uh, Kong Skull Island was in like in the seventies or something. Which, by the way, Kong Skull Island I thought was awesome. I thought that movie was badass. I even liked the first Godzilla. The second one uh, had cool action with Godzilla. Uh, I just didn't like the human interactions. I thought it was the human storylines for these movies. I just I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of that. But this King Kong Godzilla movie looks sick, man. I mean, they're like on this hangar. This uh, aircraft hangar, and there's explosions everywhere, and Kong is going for like a full punch on um, on Godzilla. So they're, they're going to go at it in this movie. And this movie must be so expensive to do because at this point you're getting you, – you know, you can imagine a King Kong solo movie and a solo Godzilla movie. That in itself, those are two big budget monster flicks, right? Now you have these two – monsters going at it in one movie man we're talking that's an expensive movie you know i want to see that that's going to be really awesome that's going to be badass Uh, i hope it is you know i hope i hope they do well and we haven't seen any trailers we haven't seen anything all we have is this image of them on this uh aircraft hangar and uh it's been delayed twice so far and Hmm. I hope I don't think the movie is having any issues behind the scenes. I do think it needs to be polished to the best that it can be. You know, uh, we're talking heavy CG here, heavy CG. Um, 
it's King Kong and Godzilla going at it. And I don't know. Teddy, by the way, thanks for joining. Uh, you guys watching on our TikTok Live. Really appreciate it. And, you know, it's interesting, man. I don't know. I, I, I hope that so far they've done well. You know, I didn't like Godzilla 2 as much as other people just because uh, I thought the story was very bland with the characters. I, I love Godzilla. I thought Godzilla was great. But uh, the human elements of that movie were just really boring. I thought it was very draggy when it didn't need to be draggy. You know, uh, should have just stuck it straight with Godzilla. That's what we want to see anyway. We want to see Godzilla. We, you know, that's what we're there for. You know, and so far, I love what they're doing with this monster universe. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, what I think it's going to happen in this movie, I think it's going to be very similar to Batman v Superman. If we have any uh, Batman v Superman fans here, is I think they're going to fight each other. Because essentially, Godzilla and King Kong are the protagonists in their own movies, right? They're both good characters in these movies. And... I think what's going to happen in the King Kong versus Godzilla is I think they're going to probably they're going to be fighting half the movie, right? There's going to be that tension between them and I think there's going to be a bigger evil that maybe they need to team up and destroy. You know, Batman v Superman, who they had to defeat Doomsday Lex Luthor. In this case it might be I don't remember the name, but I think it's that three-headed dragon that we saw in the previous movie and I think that would be awesome. That would be really cool to see. Sounds really expensive. That's going to be an epic action flick. You know what I mean? It's going to be really cool. It's going to be really cool. And let's see, though. You know, um, I don't know when we'll even be able to see this movie, right? Everything's been getting delayed. Everything. There's no theaters right now. There's nothing. Everything's on hold. And, you know, if you look at right now with uh, Tenet, Christopher Nolan's movie, Tenet, it just got delayed indefinitely now, right? It's We don't know when that movie's going to come out now. And I don't think they're going to release it on video on demand. I really don't. That movie, they were really hyping it up for IMAX and stuff like that. Ah, it sucks. You know, it sucks. Now it's delayed indefinitely. And that was the last movie. That was like the last hope for movie theaters in the sense of, Really just trying to make that stamp of like, don't worry guys, movie theaters are coming back in a big way, summer blockbuster. The summer block, the summer season for movies is over. It's, this year is pretty much canceled, right? And now that movie got delayed indefinitely. Uh, after that got delayed, The Conjuring 3 got delayed as well. So at this point, everything is just being pushed. And I think everything is going to have to be, just be pushed till next year. So I think we're going to see a delay of movies movies are going to be set back a whole year at this point movies that are supposed to come out this year are going to have to come out next year and the movies that are being shot now for next year are going to have to be re released the following year so and that's a shame because there i mean we were supposed to see the batman movie next year right uh with robert pattison i think that's gonna be pushed back now that's gonna have to be pushed next year you know we were gonna see i i'm hoping we still get to see avatar 2 next year I hope so, but I don't know. I don't know. I know they're still—they're already working on it. They're shooting. They're editing. This guy's doing. James Cameron is doing like four or five sequels for this thing. So, let's see. You know, let's see. I, I have high hopes. I hope everything gets better. You know what I mean? Streaming services right now are peaking. You know, everybody's on streaming service. Everybody's on Netflix. Everybody's on. You know, look at all these movies that got so much traction because of streaming services. You know, and now I think the ultimate question is going to be, what are we going to do with these movies that are supposed to be released in theaters? How long are we going to be without theaters? And how long till it's even considered normal to even make that money back? How do you make that money back? That's, that's interesting. How, you know, yeah, you can open up theaters right now, let's say at 20% capacity. How much money are you really going to make if you can't fill those seats in a theater? And we're talking three, four hundred million dollar movies. So what do you do there? How does that affect show times? We're talking, you know, movies that are over two hours long, two hours long maybe. And you can't fill the whole theater. Which means sells out faster, 
That's less tickets you're selling. That's less people that are going to be able to go throughout the day because there's only so many. You're going to have the same amount of show times because the, the uh, at the end of the day, the movie's the same time. It's two hours. You only have a certain amount of time. And you're not filling the seats as much as you can. So it's they're in a tough spot right now if they want to release this on, on video on demand or it's a tough spot. It really is, you know. But let's see. Let's see. I'm I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic. I think this year is pretty much canceled. I feel like everything's gonna have to be pushed to next year. I, I hope that they don't resort to video on demand. I don't want to see Tenet or Wonder Woman or uh Dune. Right or 007 at my home. I want to watch it in the theater, and I hope things get better so we can do that. You know, but yeah, guys, I feel like I've been rambling. Uh, I've been rambling for some time. I, it, it was a good ramble, but uh, just really wanted to just express that with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'm very excited. Josh and I are very excited to do. Uh, we're gonna do a, our next episode this week. We're gonna be. Um, we want to cover the Xbox Showcase. We're getting, uh, you know, the first party games. I mean, they're going to show Halo Infinite. That's going to be amazing. So we are going to cover that that Thursday right after. We're going to go straight in here and talk about it because that's going to be huge. I mean, they're going to be talking about Halo Infinite, possibly Fable. They might be doing another Fable, and that's going to be awesome. Halo Infinite, I think I'm very optimistic about it. I think when they show... When they reveal this game, I think it's going to be a huge thing. I think it's, I think it's going to blow our minds. I really do, and I really hope so because I'm a huge Halo fan, huge Halo fan. So we will be talking about that in our next episode. It's very exciting, and yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast of me just, I <laughs> just been rambling for like 30 minutes, but you know, just, just want to keep you guys updated, and you know, we're playing Ghost of Tsushima. We will have. That'll probably be our next review. So we are going to we want to cover the Xbox showcase, and then after that, hopefully by then we'll be done with the game because we are taking our time. We really want to digest the game and enjoy it because it's been great so far. And we are going to review Ghost of Tsushima for you guys, and uh, we're really excited about it. It's been great so far. So hopefully you guys enjoy this episode. If you're watching us on YouTube, leave a like, subscribe. It always helps the channel. We want to keep doing this. It's it's, it's fun, man, at the end of the day. And if you guys are listening, thank you. You know, if you want to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you're listening to or if just share it with your friends, anybody that would like this podcast and enjoy it. And, you know, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Until the next one, goodbye.